happy What Should I Do Wednesday on Thursday. I know. <sighs> My week, though, and I know you've heard me say that a lot here lately because a lot of crap has happened in my life in the last few weeks. But this week is one of those that just kind of takes the cake. So on Tuesday, I was coming back from taking my daughter to horseback riding lessons and we go into the gas station to get something to drink and someone steals my cell phone. It happened in literally like 45 seconds. I do not even know. I go to this gas station all the time. I've never had an issue like this. It was overly busy. Um, I don't know if it was just a lot of people are either coming back from the holiday or just getting back into the swing thing. I don't know what it was. Like, everybody was wanting Lazy Tuesday and, like, eat gas station food. I really don't know what it was all about, but all I know is that it happened really fast. I was getting something to drink. I turned my back for two seconds. My phone's gone. And so, and they steal an iPhone. I mean, they steal the most locked down phone on the planet. I can do everything from a computer. Um, not to mention, I have a MacBook, so I can really do everything from my computer. I Once I realized it was gone, and I realized that it had been stolen, because the minute we tried to call it, it had already been turned off. So whoever stole it had some sort of intelligence, because when it comes to the phone at least, because they know that if you turn it off, then they can't track it with the Find My iPhone feature. So I went home, and it was offline, so I knew that it had been turned off. And I locked it all down, I erased it. I put on the little screen that says, hey, I'm stolen, and a number that they could call me at, it's probably long gone now. I, whatever. So I call my insurance company, file my insurance claim, pay the freaking deductible that I have to pay, and they're like, great, no problem, we'll have you a phone in 24 hours. Great. I was expecting my phone, since it was after 5 o'clock, it was later in the, in the evening, I was expecting my phone today, which is Thursday. Um, my phone is yet to ship. So I called them last night to see what was going on. And they're like, oh, it's under review. It'll be two to three business days. What? I can't go two to three business days without a phone. I could have went 24 hours, but I could not go two or three business days. You're outside your damn mind. So I end up going to T-Mobile and they give me a loaner phone. I get, I get a little loaner device until I get my phone at on Monday at the earliest. Gag me. I officially give up on people. I officially give up on humanity. People just suck. <sighs> But I'm okay now because I at least have a phone. I at least have my, you know, connection to the outside world again until Monday when I get my phone and it'll be fine. I, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's fine. But it's still annoying as crap. It's just one of those things that, like, brings you down so far. You're just like, ugh. Why do people want to steal other people's shit? Like, it makes no sense to me. It's absolutely insane. But anyway, we're not here to talk about the craziness that is my life or the fact that I'm going to super glue my phone to my wrist I think we are here for what should I do Wednesday on Thursday to answer all of your general paranormal related questions that you guys have asked me all up on the Facebook page and we have a fun little list that we are going to go through today and we're going to get started because we have a lot to cover and I want to get this video to you before like midnight now our first question is one that I have not answered for two weeks because I have done like tech stuff the last couple of weeks talking about different various paranormal equipment and I promised Walter that I would answer his question today before he got his wand in a knot even more for not answering his question because if you guys haven't noticed he kind of likes to pick on me <sighs> rude but I'm gonna be nice and put his question at the top of the list and answer it first okay okay so his question was how many different kinds of spirits are there and what are they? Um, there are, well, there, it's basically just broken down into two different types of spirit energy. Um, there's residual and intelligent. Um, residual spirit energy, and then there's poltergeist. So I guess there's three. Um, there's the residual, which is spirit energy that's basically embedded into the the framework of a, of a location um it's you know you get it's like a broken tape recorder the same thing happens at the same time every day or the same time every night because it's significant to that location so you'll hear um a tape you know you can hear music that was maybe played there on a daily basis or you can hear a laugh or, or something it's residual it happens all the time it's not there's no intelligent response behind it an intelligent spirit 
is one that you can communicate with. You know, hey, are you there? Tap once for yes, tap. Tap twice for no, tap, tap. You know, um, move that, knock that over, make a noise, talk to me. You can have the conversation with them. You can, you can communicate with them. That is a, that's an intelligent spirit. That can be the spirit of a loved one. That can be um, the spirit of someone significant to the location. But it is someone that has enough energy um, manifested to be able to communicate with you, maybe physically touch you, appar- you know, become an apparition. Those are intelligent spirits. Um, then you have poltergeist activity, which is the, a noisy ghost. Um, poltergeist is German for noisy ghost. It involves moving objects, slamming doors, being very active, being a very active spirit. Um, they are subject to be anywhere. You can have all, any type of that parent, that spirit energy anywhere. Um, there's a haunted location. There's, there's potential for poltergeist activity. There's potential for residual. There's potential for intelligent. Um, and with, with that comes apparitions and noises and, um, temperature changes, all that, all of the things that go into spiritual um, activity and paranormal activity is, is available at any location. So yeah, poltergeist, intelligent and residual energy are the three most common types of spirit energy. So there, there, I answered your question. You can be happy now. And you were even number one. God, that's going to go to his head. Anyway, moving on. Our next question is, I've always been followed by the number three. I was born at 333. I wake up at 333 in the morning and even my social security number and driver's license add up to nine, which is three threes. Why is that? First of all, that's freaking awesome. Um, I think that, you know, you always, you you always have like your lucky number or a number that's significant to you. Um, mine for a long time, mine's always kind of been the 13. Um, my daughter was born on June 13th. It's, you know, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of 13s that have been in my life in various times of my life, um, as well as other numbers, but I think 13 and 7 have played a big significant role in my life. Um, threes are interesting. I, threes kind of can be kind of scary once in a while. I mean, when you think of three, um, and being in threes or groups of three in the paranormal world, um, you think of three scratches, which is the mocking of the Trinity, which we often refer as demonic in nature, not saying that what your situation is has anything to do with that. Um, I think that three is just your number. It, you know, you were born at 333. You were kind of set up for that, that number. You were born at that weird, that odd hour. Um, 3 a.m. is the witching hour, um, when paranormal activity is at its most prevalent and it's mo and it's can be heightened. Um, I think that it's, it's just maybe a part of who you are and it's significant to you and it, I don't know as it has any, you know, paranormal base. Um, I think that that is just a significance in your life. Um, it's a really cool one to have. I don't know, I don't believe that you're cursed by anything or anything like that. Um, I don't know if it's causing you any issues or if it's just kind of your thing. I think I'd play the lottery and ask for all threes. I mean, you never know, you know, you you might not know. Make sure that all of your, you know, ask for three, 13, 33, you know, 43 and 53, whatever. Just ask, you know, make sure there's a three in there. You never know. You might be a billionaire before it's over. So besides, I don't really think that, so I really don't think that there's anything like negatively significant about it unless it's having a negative impact on your life, which you can let me know. Um, But I think it's just one of those really cool things that's part of your life and makes you you. So enjoy it. If it brings you good luck, then ride the train. You never know where it's going to go. So I think it's really cool that that's part of your life. And, um, I'm interested to hear more about So make sure you make a comment below, um, about how it affects you and whether it affects you negatively or positively or both. Cause I think it's something that we're all going to be really interested to hear about. So thank you for your question. Um, our next question is why can't we ourselves talk or communicate with ghosts? Why does it have to be through television? 
What can I possibly do to reach out to the other side? And do you have to be gifted in some way? Okay. Um, anyone, and I mean anyone, is subject to paranormal activity. Um, a lot of times you have to remember that it's location-based. You are at a location that is haunted. You yourself are not haunted. Um, so you can and you do have the ability to reach out to the spirit world if you're at the prime location, if you're at a location. If you're open to it, they're, if you're open to them, they're going to they're gonna know. You, you taunt them and call them out, they're going to be directed to you. You don't have to be gifted. Um, being gifted makes it easier, but you don't have to be gifted. I'm an empath, but that doesn't mean that I can sense a spirit a mile away. I can sense people um, a distance away. You know, I can know when one of my friends is having a really bad day without them saying a word to me. Or I can tell their mood through a text message. They don't have to call me. They don't have to. I can tell by the way that they're talking to me. I can tell by the way that their their words are coming across. That they're having a good day, a bad day, an off day. They're down. They're sad. They're depressed. They're tired. I can tell all of that. Um, and it's really cool because you can't BS me very much. Um, because I can call it a mile away. So I know when you're full of crap fast. Um which is really kind of nice, but I don't yet have the ability to walk into a room and be like, there's a spirit here. I can't do that. I don't, I don't know if, if that's in my cards. I don't know if that's in my future, but I kind of just take my gift one day at a time and, and let it grow and develop each and every day. Um, and since I've been a part of this family, I've had been surrounded by really awesome people um, that have helped me grow in my abilities. One of our admins, Darla and her husband, Chris, have helped me grow and and thrive in my ability. And I thank them every day for that because I am so much happier fully understanding what's happening to me and knowing what's going on with me every day when I feel off and exhausted and tired. I used to not know why and now I fully understand and get it. So much love to the two of you because I am so much stronger and so much um, more happy because I understand exactly what I'm dealing with. So no, I don't. You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to have that ability. Um, you have to have the location, and you have to have you know the opportunity. So it, it's not it's not you. You can't. It's not like you're closed off from the spirit world. You just have to get out there and investigate. And you never know and what you're going to come across. So. You do have the ability, anybody has the ability to experience paranormal activity. It's just having the right location and having um, the right mind frame, I think, to handle that. But you want to be careful because with that comes dangers. Um, and you have to be willing to accept that. You have to be willing to accept the fact that something might follow you home or that you might be subject, subjected to something evil. And you have to be prepared mentally, physically, and emotionally to handle that. So you are very well and capable of having paranormal activity. It's just you need to have the right location to do so. Um, our last question is one where I'm going to get to get sassy because it's just driving me nuts. Now, the last couple of days, this game has swept the internet. This Charlie game um, has swept the internet, swept the world. It is this craze mass thing where basically it's like four pencils and a sheet of paper. And it's basically like a makeshift Ouija board. Um, and you call out this spirit and he apparently comes through and wreaks havoc on your life. I don't know exactly what all. I have not read into it because I don't touch this stuff. If any of you have been around and watched my videos for a significant period of time, you know how I feel about Ouija boards. You know how I feel about any type of spirit board that you use to conjure anything. You are playing with fire. It is evil in nature almost always. They are. I realize that they were designed originally just to contact spirits, but they have become and in time manifested into something of their own. I don't care if Hasbro sells them on the street corner in hot pink dipped in glitter. They are horrible. And this is no different. I think when you're doing something like this, you are taking a chance and opening a, a gateway that you are not prepared to do. I get that teenagers think it's fun to freak out their friends and freak out each other, but you are playing with fire. So I think it's absolute crap. Um, I don't advise anybody to do it. I think that you are dealing with something that is evil and it's all it's going to take is one, you know, it's, it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. Somebody's going to do it wrong. If there's any, like I said, I haven't done a lot of research into it. I just know the basis of it. And if there's any spiritual connection behind it at all, um, 
I think a whole lot of people are asking for a whole lot of trouble because right now it's hot, right now it's a fad, right now it's a thing, and people are doing it. And I think it's going to open the gateway for the crazies to come out of the woodwork, for people to start acting a fool, for people to start getting hurt, and that's when it's just not fun anymore. And it shouldn't ever be anything that be, should be done anyway. So my thought on it is if you're doing it, you're stupid. If you haven't done it yet, don't. Leave it alone. It's not worth it. Don't even play with it. You never, ever, ever know what the consequences of your actions are going to be when you're messing with something like that. The same with the spirit, Ouija board. Like I said, I don't care if Hasbro sells them in pink, purple, orange, green, and blue, and they are dipped in glitter, and they shoot rainbows from the Blanchet. I don't care what happens. I think they are all junk, and they are all crap, and they are not good. And if I keep talking about it, I'm just going to get fired up and I'm just going to get sassy and I do not have the energy to do so today. So that's my thought. I think it's stupid. I think it's crap. And I think that it should just be destroyed and left alone. Okay. Okay. So that is all I have for what should I do Wednesday on Thursday. I will be back tomorrow for GA Flashback Friday, where we are going to the Eastern State Penitentiary, and we are going to review that episode. So until then, stay happy, stay healthy, have a great rest of your week. I will see you guys tomorrow. Much love and happiness. Bye!